This is a video tutorial for how to use Pixlr to edit the photographs of your artwork for your digital portfolio. So you took those high quality pictures, you've uploaded them to your Google Drive, now you're ready to open Pixlr. Go to a new tab and type in Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R, and that'll bring you to hopefully the very first search result. You will find this one that says Online Photo Editor. Pixlr Editor. That's the one you want to choose. And it'll bring you to their website. Make sure that you see this blue butterfly with a pencil. There's a couple different versions of Pixlr, and this is the one you want to use for editing your artwork photos. Okay, open an image from your computer to get your first piece of artwork open. And uh, this is opening from my desktop, but yours will open from your Google Drive if you're using a Chromebook. I'm going to choose this picture to edit first and go ahead and open that. Okay, if you open it and it's not turned the right way, that's an easy fix. Go ahead and open images and then rotate the picture however you need. This one needs to be rotated 180 degrees, but you also, if it's sideways, you can turn it 90 degrees either clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, it's turned the right way. I'm going to start by using the curves option. So I'm going to go up to adjustment and select curves. Now curves has several features to it. I'm not going to worry about this part right in here. I'm only going to use these three eyedroppers. You can use these for a quick contrast or color fix. Um, the top eyedropper is for selecting anything in your artwork that is supposed to be a true bright white. If you click on that, it'll adjust it and turn it to that true bright white, and then it'll adjust all the other colors in the artwork accordingly. The same thing works if you have a true gray in your artwork, you would use this one. And if you have something that's supposed to be a true black in your artwork, then you would select this one. So the pupils in this portrait are supposed to be a true black. I'm going to select the black eyedropper, and then click right on top of where I would like to see it be a true black and you'll see that that made adjustments to all of the colors to then make that pupil actually a true black. If you're happy with it say okay. Sometimes you choose these and they don't always make your artwork look better. Like for example I click the white and I click this background that is getting it a little bit washed out. So if there's ever anything where you're like, eh, that actually did not make my artwork look better, you can always just cancel it. And if it was something that um, you still see changes, you can always go up to edit, undo, and you can undo as many changes as you need. So let's try that one more time. We're going to go to curves. I'm going to do just the black. I don't think the white was helping much. So I'm going to select just the black. Um, and I'll commit to that by saying OK. And now I can make manual adjustments using the levels option. So go up to adjustment, choose levels, and then these boxes right here, I can slide along this line to change and darken it. This box controls my shadows. Uh, this would control my midtones. And then this box over here controls my highlights, and that would make the whole overall artwork a little bit brighter, a little bit uh, more light. And so I'm going to just increase the shadows just a slight bit. Um, you can see it's easy to overdo it, so don't, don't do something like this. That can go wrong very quickly. Um, just make very small changes. You really want it to match the original piece of artwork. So if you have that on the desk next to you, you're trying to make the photograph look as much like the actual artwork. So I just brought my shadows in a little bit to increase the contrast making those parts darker and I brought my highlights in a little bit to make those parts brighter white because higher contrast almost always looks better. Okay I'm happy with those changes. I'm going to say OK. Next I will use the crop tool. It's this top left one. Select that and then you are going to draw a box around your artwork and get that box as close to the edges as possible without actually cutting out any of your artwork. I'll bring this one in. Not yet. Let's try that again.
Okay, I'm gonna adjust this one just so slightly because I'm cutting off that edge there. And then I'll bring this in just a little. And this one up. Okay, so I got as close as I could without actually cutting out any of the artwork. If I'm happy with the way it looks, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the Enter key on my keyboard that commits to the crop. Now you'll notice that while this edge was lined up for the most part with my crop tool, this edge was way off and I still see a lot of the picture or the paper that was behind the picture. That's something that you can fix. You'll need to go up to Edit, go down to Free Distort. When you click that, you'll get these four little boxes that show up in the corners. And what you can do is you can click on a box and you can pull it up and out and you're just slightly stretching your artwork so that it fills the entire rectangle without having that extra background in there. So just move it only enough to make it so that all you see in that rectangle or that square would be your artwork. Okay, I think that looks good. I don't see any, any of that extra background behind there anymore. If you're happy with the changes, hit the Enter key on your keyboard and that commits to those changes. Okay, so after distorting the artwork, I'm going to go up to Adjustment and I'm gonna work on the hue and saturation. So select that. And the only thing I wanna focus on right now is the saturation. If this is a black and white piece of artwork, say it's a pen drawing or a charcoal drawing or even um, a scratch board or a graphite drawing, I don't want any color tints to it. And sometimes that happens with the lights in the room when you're taking a picture. So any black and white drawing, I would take saturation all the way to the left where it's at negative 100. And that would ensure that your photo that you have is a true black and white photo and you're not getting little color cast from anything in the environment where you took the picture. Now this artwork, however, is a colored piece of artwork. So instead of going to the left, I want to slide this to the right and I'm going to increase the saturation. And so it's just a little bit more vibrant. My colors pop a little bit more um, and I don't, it doesn't get washed out. Sometimes that happens with uh, when you take a photograph, you don't see the colors as well. Definitely don't overdo this. You can see if I take it all the way, it becomes a little too extreme and it doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like my original work anymore. So I'm going to bring it to about right here. And I think that looks good. So I'm going to say OK to that. And then after that, I'm going to look closely at my artwork and I'm going to see where there are drips, fingerprints, tears, smudges, anything that was a little flaw that you would like to fix. I'm going to go ahead and add one to this one just because I want to show you how to be able to fix it. So I'm just going to say, oops, oh no, I dropped my pen on my artwork and I need to fix that. So zoom in on the spot that you would like to fix. And you're going to use the clone stamp to fix it. And so that's this tool right here. Click the clone stamp. And it's a two-part tool. What you're going to do is you're going to select and copy from one spot in your artwork and you're going to paste that to the spot where you want to make the fix or the correction. So you need to find something that's a, a close match. So where this line is on my artwork, I want to match this skin tone. And I've got all this area right here that looks like a true match. Um, I'm going to start by just bringing my brush size up a little bit. Okay. And then I have to hold down control click to select. So this is the area I want to take from. On my keyboard, I hold down control and I click with the mouse. And then when I let go, I will move over and now I'm ready to do the second part. When I click over this, you can see I am copying where the large circle is and I'm taking from where the small circle is with the little bullseye in it. So I'm just using that area and I'm replacing this mistake here with that area. And I can do it as many times as I need. So um, if this doesn't look like as a match, as much of a match to this anymore, I can say, okay, over here, it looks like a closer match. I'm going to hold down my control key, click and select that area now. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that. Um, 
Oh, looks like maybe over here is actually the better match. So just play around with this as much as you need. Remember, if it if you make a mistake, you can always undo it. You can hit Control Z on your keyboard. That's a fast shortcut. The other option is to go up to Edit, and you can click Undo. Now, this mistake a lot of people make with their clone stamp is they click and drag for too long. So let's say I'm taking um, a sample from right here from where I want to copy from and then I'm copying it here and if I'm just clicking and dragging and I'm not letting go watch where my source is where I'm taking from it's running over the eye and it's actually creating another eye right under the forehead I don't want that so just be careful about clicking and dragging for too long. If you let go and you start to click and just like do small areas, it creates a much smoother effect. So I'm just going to undo that. So Control Z, got rid of that. I'm going to zoom back out and see how this looks. Okay, this picture is ready for saving. All the editing's done. I'm going to go up to File, Save. I'm going to change the name. My recommendation is to do your name and then give the artwork a title. Okay, when you're happy with it, click OK. Make sure it's saving as a JPEG. Um, in your Google Drive, if you create a folder, a folder for your final digital portfolio, that's gonna help you stay organized and every time you edit a picture, you just save it to that folder and then you'll be able to turn it in through Google Classroom very easily. So just save it there and you are all set to start editing your next picture. So you'll go up to File, Open Image, and then choose whichever picture you would like to edit next. And um, when you open that, you'll be able to see that you've got a new picture ready to go. Um, feel free to pause, replay, rewatch, do whatever you need to to learn these steps from this video tutorial. And always feel free to ask me questions if anything's still unclear. Thank you.